All right, so then we got our clutch mouse trap here. Favorite tool down here to play with. We got this working bitching. Luckily, the adjustment doesn't really change on this stuff when you play around with it like this. I think it's going to change our length of this here a little bit, which we can fine tune right down there. extension ain't a problem. Probably should get that hooked up before it gets too buried in here where I can't see anything. It's already dark. How come there's two clips off? Over bent a bunch of times. Need to rebend it again. Where'd the pliers go? So we're going to bend this a little bit. We need to bend it multiple places right now. It's too long this way. See how it's equal. Actually, that's probably enough just doing that. It looks round again. Now we'll try squeezing up a little bit too. There we go. It's oval again. Sharp side is out. Try to get it on the clips now. Ah, you son of a bitch. I'm trying to poke a hole in my finger. Ah, got me. Gouged me. Not bleeding, though. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, though. Okay, that goes on there. Can't see squats, so just do it. Hope you did it right. I don't know, get in there, dumbass. I heard a pop. Oh, now I can see. There she goes. See that thing go pop? Pop goes the wheels. Ooh. All right, that one's in there. Okay, let me get this thing up in the air. About here. Come right up until it hits the head. Let me back it off a little bit. Then you tighten it down, and then it'll move around to where it wants to, and you readjust it. Yeah, moves. Right on the head now. Hang on, 
cover on there, you can't put the socket in there now. Jeez, who did that? That's why you get that short socket. He's a short sock. It'll get in there, but yep, your nose barely, but it does get in there. Okay, I think it on there where it belongs. Can't get that no more. I get it with this one though. Oh yeah. Where are we at? We are right on the head, I think. Right next to the head. Found my hammer. Yeah, we're off the head now. We're not exhausting here yet. Raise it up a little bit. That's good. Okay. I'll make some more fine tuning adjustments here. Okay, so we got very minimal clearance right between the head and the bracket. It's like they're right there, friendly with each other. It's close, really close. That grows too much to rub on it. Okay, the problem right now is this thing's bowed out like this. So this bracket here needs to be bent to take the load off of this. But I can't move it in because we're gonna hit the head if we do. So now I'm gonna take it a uh, crescent wrench and bend that bracket. So we used to have a crescent wrench. You got a couple of them floating around here somewhere. Yeah, there's two of them. Use this one. Hopefully, we can get in here and do that. Oh yeah. Okay, now we just get a little bit of a little bit of a bend. Fine tune it a little bit. Okay, Let's straighten it out just a little bit. That's all I needed. Just make a nice straight run in there. Looks like it's still got a little bit in there. See how the clevis is fighting it? It's actually brackets probably over here, so it needs to go over further. Okay, so I'm gonna try bending that a little bit more again. Keep fine tuning it a little bit. That. Oh, there we go. That's what I want to see. Now we got freedom. So now, see how the club is smooth? 
rattles and moves. It didn't do that before. Now it does. That's what you want to see. Now the clip won't be forced off. It'll wear a lot better. And we still got our clearance right here. So and now everything's working correctly. And I think we're a little bit higher now here than we used to be because I got this thing up right up, getting friendly up in there. It'll wear itself in. Okay, how's our free play? We got free play. Clutch works really, really nice. It's a really a hard clutch to work. So. Yeah, it's just like going like that. Okay, now you want to see how good the clutch works. Now we got the cover off. We can actually see the clutch over here. And the releases. Right about there is where it locks. If you watch the clutch over here. See, it's fully released. I can move the clutch and then move it and bring it in a little bit until it quits dragging. Still release it right there. Right about there is where it hooks up. So we're just starting to drag that half a clutch off. So by five eighths off, you're going to start taking off in the last three quarter. So about three quarters out is where it really starts to go. It's exactly where I like them being at. You don't want to let off right at the damn bar. That's stupid. So this looks like it's going to work pretty damn nice. It's definitely nice and free. That's how they're supposed to work. Okay, so that was a good test, and now we know how that's going to work. I didn't know how it was going to be until we tried riding it, so now I know, because I checked it. Okay, so that's all back up on there. So the clutch is installed. The adjustment looks good. We have free play. Uh, let's see here. I'm not sure how much free play is way back in there, but I can't get to the lever. Yeah, it's got free play. So you can watch the lever back in here. So way, way down in there is a black lever. So if I go back and forth with the clutch, you can see it moving. And see here you can see the clutch pulling too. See I can see out of the corner of my eye, I can see how this works right here. Whoop, up in here. And you watch that little lever way in the back. See it moves that far, it's just free play. So this is much here is free play right here. That's free play. So that's good. Everything else still works, so we're good to go. Now if you don't have any free play in your clutch, that means the clutch plates here, you're taking tension off them, they're gonna they're gonna burn, they're gonna slip. So you have to have a certain amount of free play built in right here, and then you have to also have free play up here in your cable. In this case it's a rock, it's a different style clutch, but same difference. You get a, first you have clearance here, then you get a clearance here. Then you go up and fine tune it to where you want the clutch to let out at by where it all comes in correctly at. All those things are adjustable. Okay, so we got this all buttoned up here. I'm going to go ahead and put the plug wires on here to get them out of my way. Like this. Okay, and then in there. Okay, so all kinds of stuff. So we got to work on the primary tomorrow, which we have not done yet. Well, I gotta put the exhaust system back on, which I haven't done yet. Speedometer's done. Everything else is pretty well buttoned back up. We're gonna let that sealer dry overnight, obviously. So the last thing we gotta do is come over here and check our push rod. Make sure it is loosened up. Oh, look at that! It's nice and loose. Okay. Drop that down. Take her in a cover. Shove it all the way up into the hole. Make sure it's in the hole. See, first you get the cover, and then you go into the hole. So, take that's down. Get it apart near you. Okay, hold that up like that. And then go like that. I don't know if you heard that pop when it went up and the rest of the way. Rotate it back and forth a few times, jiggle it around, make sure it's in a good, nice, comfortable spot. Hopefully everything seals up now. Okay, so that part is done. That's all done. All we got to do now is put the backing plate back on it. Which is right here. It goes there.
Get a little bit of blue Loctite. Quarter drive ratchet. Uh, okay, we're using those short bolts. We've got a star washer on them. I like star washers here because they have a lot, they have more bite areas. Plus, if they actually go in the motor, they're so small they don't do a lot of damage. Whereas a regular thick lock washer will do a lot more damage. This one will break up. So there are different reasons to use different hardware. These usually don't have as much holding power, but they have more gripping power. Call it that. You always want to put a lock down your hardware inside of here because you don't want these to fall out. Most of the time when they fall out, they drop down in the air cleaner right around. They don't go in the motor, but they do go in there. Believe me, they do. But usually they're on the bottom of the air cleaner. Okay, this here, you got a lock washer and just a standard nut. I like running a lock nut on this because I don't want this thing to fall out. And this whole thing, this big bolt comes in the air cleaner. Same thing. I don't trust the lock wash as much as I do lock nuts. So we're going to find ourselves a little lock nut. We need a quarter inch fine thread one. I'm going to take about two seconds to look in this box and say screw this and go get a new one. Okay, there's a new one. It costs more money, but it saved me about five minutes in time. Plus, I was able to find it. Okay, we're going to put a little Loctite on this. Okay, spacer goes between the bracket on the back side over here. Give you a flat washer on both sides to help support everything. Give us nice even torque. I don't want the nut on the inside of the air cleaner because two reasons. Sometimes a filter hits against that and the nut's taller. The other thing is when that bolt falls out, it's so big it usually drops down here. Rarely will it ever go in that hole. That nut, it could probably won't go in there either, but it might. It's a lot smaller, it can bounce up in there. So I'd rather have a bolt bouncing in here than an open nut. So you always got to look at what happens if something goes wrong. It's always a fail safe in there someplace. Okay. I'm going to tighten this one up just a little bit. Not all the way. Just enough, it's got just some drag on it. And then we tighten all these up. That lets everything kind of center. See how they move around quite a bit here now. Because not everything was pulled in, see? Okay, a little torque. If you over torque these, you probably break the carburetor. If you're lucky, you just strip it. Now, if you put a gasket in there, which I don't usually use, that gives you some cush, which gives you a false feeling of tightness. This one you can tighten up pretty good. Yep, I don't mind torquing that one. Okay, when you're all done, it should be nice and solid. It's solid. See, solid sounds solid. You know, something's loose, sounds loose. Solid is solid. This is loose. Okay, so that is all done. Everything here is back together. We got the exhaust to do. I don't know what the nut is for that. That's probably the nut right there, I'm guessing. This looks like the appropriate nut for up here. I like running a harder mechanical washer, like I said earlier. The problem is there's no way to get it in there. 
Gotta get the cover out of the way to put the nut in there. If you don't do that, you'll never get the damn thing in there because it's so tight. socket would work good. Got my nice long sockets. There we go. Way over here. Helps to be a long ways away. If we get down here below the fender, it not be in the way of it. The heat shield is still in the way though. I'm gonna let me get in there. Uh, it's a half inch, isn't it? Yep. I can't get in there with a socket anymore. Still got to move the fender a little bit. Hopefully the bike won't fall over. I'm gonna go with a wrench. And we ain't got no room on that either. This wire is supposed to be on the other side of the speedometer cable. Keep it off the bike. Oh well. Okay. Tighten this up pretty good. Okay, we'll record that. All right, we're going to retorque this one back here right now. That appears to be tight. A little bit more on that one. We got to retorque all this stuff, obviously. Okay. So everything's looking pretty good. So looks like now the only real problem we got right now is. This thing is wide, laying down here in the exhaust system, possibly. It needs to be up here. So I didn't wrap it around the speedometer cable when I hooked it up, and I'm not going to, because that was too much work. So I'm going to take this here. There used to be a zip tie laying here. Somebody stole my white zip tie. Yeah, we'll find one by tomorrow, believe me. Where'd it go? Yeah, I ain't laying there. Somebody stole my white zip tie. All right, we're gonna put a zip tie on this thing and keep it off of this, off of this area. So this needs to be changed out. So we'll put a zip tie right there. Keep it up here out of the way. That way it won't be a problem. Because right now it's a problem. See, when you reroute stuff differently, things change. I didn't see that hanging over there before, so. I wasn't paying attention enough. You can stick it in here like this and cheat. Oh, look at that. I was able to cheat and make it work. Look at that. There we go. No zip tie. I think we still probably put a zip tie right here for everything. Just keep everything safe and secure. But now you don't have to. It's, it's tucked in there good now. There, you just had to reposition it slightly. There you go. That's all it took. Of course, now this is one to be further over. See, if you put a zip tie over here, it'll take it off of here. I like that. Gotta get this stuff off that hot parts. Hot parts are cylinders. So we still need a zip tie up in here to hold it. All right, that is it for the night. Oh, geez, another short night. 140. Okay, well, that's it for the night on this one. We'll get this thing buttoned up tomorrow and get it out of here, hopefully, if there's no more leaks. Still got to fix that starter, though. All right, that's it for now.